So before we actually create that calculated field for profit, I wanted to point out something. I noticed that the border for sales is actually a little bit higher um, than the cost in plant. So what I want to do is I want to fix that. And there's a couple things you can do. First of all, if you grab the magnifier um, by left clicking and then pulling your mouse down, you'll be able to perform a zoom. And then you can get to a little more granular or fine detail of the elements. Now the next thing I want to show you is you can click the element and then try to adjust it and you'll notice that it's snapping in place with the element hints. That is because under the view menu I have snap to elements. Okay, so if I uncheck snap to elements and I uncheck element alignment heads, you'll notice that we don't have any of that particular area to snap to or to align. So the view menu makes it easy to align your elements a little bit more finer. And you can see how it snaps immediately right to that. So I wanted to point out the uh, alignment hints, the snap to, and the magnifier so you can get a little more finer detail of adjustments. And if you just double click it, it'll go to 100%. Okay, so now that my perfectionist self is satisfied with that particular element, what I'm going to do next is we're going to put a calculated field in. Now, calculated fields could be added um, a couple of ways. Um, they could be added where they're just inline in the report um, and no other object has any notion of it. Or they could be added as a formula or a function where it could then be reused in the report and other objects. So the first one I'm going to show you is profit because profit, we're not going to reuse that in any functional formula for this example. And then we're going to create another calculated field called margin, um, which we will reuse. So to give you an example of the first one, what you're going to do is just simply grab a number field and place it into your detail section, and you can align it. Now the other thing you're able to do is you can copy any of the elements and then select the adjacent element, and then you can do paste formatting. What that will do is it'll paste the alignment, the sizing, the border, any of the elements that you want um, to match. It's a good way of keeping consistency. Now for profit, we simply go to the attributes tab, you have a value section, and you'll notice that a lot of the property dialogues have a formula header with a plus. This is how you can create a lot of dynamic and custom elements. So simply, we're just going to click the plus, and you put an equal sign, and then a bracket, and then you put in the name of the field, sales, minus costs. And these are the actual uh, as names of the field elements that you created. And then you could also give the field a name, so we can just call this profit. And then you'll notice the value has a pencil next to it as well. Okay, that means that there's an edited value there. And then for format, we can type in the format of the element, such as dollar sign, pound, comma, pound, pound, pound. And that will give us our inline calculated profit. So if we do a preview, select a couple of our elements, update our screen, and there's our profit. Okay, so what we're going to do next is create a label for that profit. So we grab our label element, drop it into the header, adjustment. Here you have your alignment buttons, your font, your styles, your color. So here we'll just align it as such. And then what you're able to do is you can double click and you can do an inline edit, or you can click the ellipsis button and then type in the label. And there's the calculated column for profit with its label. And then the same thing I just showed you if you wanted to do the alignments. Obviously we can move our guide markers a little bit and then do the fine-tune adjustments. It really depends on how much of a perfectionist you are. Okay, so that's an inline calculated field. And the reason I mentioned inline calculated field before and that it doesn't have a reference to other objects. I'll give you an example. If I double click the fields, you have a drop down list. And this drop down list allows you to select fields that are in the element list from the query and from other calculated or formula function fields you create. Now you'll notice profit is not in this list. So we're going to create another field and we're going to create that using a function. And the way I do that is I go into my data section 
right click on functions and add function. And here is our variety of functions that you can utilize. The most common function you can use is open formula. Uh, this tutorial is not going to go into all the different functions. We do have a reference in our knowledge base on this documentation. And I believe it's also in the help menu uh, in the installation. So I'm going to select open formula. And you can notice that it puts an open formula expression. And then the function name, we can give this a name. We're just going to call this margin. And then I'm able to select the formula button. And this brings up the formula editor. So here are a variety of different formulas and functions that you could use. Um, for this very simple example, I'm going to type in the formula for margin, which is sales minus costs divided by sales. And you'll notice that the uh, evaluation result, if it's an error, it'll show a red X. And here I'm actually, you know, we're going to do this with parentheses following the mathematical rules. So we get our difference and then divide by our sales. Okay, now obviously we want margin to be represented as a percentage. Um, so default, this is going to show um, a decimal uh, number. So normally you would multiply it, let's say by 100, but when you change the format to use a percent, it will do that for you. So let's click OK on this. And there's our function name margin, and there's our formula. Okay, now I'm going to grab a numeric field. I'm going to position it into the location. I'm going to select my profits, right click on the new field and paste the formatting. And then I'm going to double click the field and we'll get that drop down list and you'll see that margin is now represented here. Okay. So the next thing that we have to do is change the format of margin to include that percent sign. So we go under structure, select our field, and we paste it in that format from the profit field. So what we're going to do here is just put a pound and a percent sign. And that will represent the margin. And then we'll finish this off with the appropriate labeling. And we do a preview. And there's our margin, 15%.